So Lightburn just did a thing that I wasn't ready for. Um, I had three other videos lined up before this one, and uh, I just kind of punted them all down the line because the public release candidate for 1.7 just dropped. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in here, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. Let's kind of dive in and look at some of the new stuff. Um, so I've got up on the screen, you'll see I'm 1.7 release candidate 2. It just dropped today, which is August 29th, 2024. And, um, you know, I'm excited to show you some of the things that I've been playing around with for a while in the betas, um, but they also dropped a couple of neat things in there that I hadn't expected and didn't see up until now. So uh, I might be seeing some of these fresh just as you are. Um, all right. So first of all, I know that the line tool underwent a whole lot of renovation um, and it was done in support of uh, some other changes that, that they were working on. Um, so let's take a look at the line tool here. So, in, you know, besides kind of cleaning it up in general, um, if you'll notice, if you look at the cursor, if I push an S, if I press S and release S, you'll see that it goes, uh, th there's a little curve and then there's a hard corner there. So as I hit S, it's going to toggle, um, let me undo that here. It's going to toggle between a smooth corner and a, uh, a smooth and a corner. So smooth nodes, corner nodes. So if I hit leave it on the corner, I'm going to get hard edge corners like I'd expect. Now, if I push the S for smooth, my next corner is going to be a curve. So it makes it a lot easier to work with curves and work with the line tool. And then you hit S again and it changes to hard corners. So that's really cool. Um, that's one thing, and then there's a reason I put a whole bunch of spaghetti on the screen, and that's because I want to take a look at the new trim tool. Uh, people are constantly asking for, how do I delete segments of a line? And the answer previously has always been going to node editing and hit T for trim or break things apart. Well, now the uh, awesome devs over at Lifeburn have given us a trim tool. So I can click on the little scissor toolbar over here, and as you see, as I hover over a segment, it shows me real time what's going to be trimmed out. And what it does is it attempts to trim from, um, you know, the end of the line to the next nearest uh, intersection, basically. So I can trim that out if I want. I can trim that out, you know, so I can really kind of play with this. And you'll notice when I trim that last line, it actually closed off the shape. So let me undo that. There are some modifiers for this. So if I hover over this, if I hold control when clicking, it actually prevents the nodes from joining and creating that closed shape. So if I hold control and trim, it doesn't light up on me. But if I just trim without the control key, you'll see that everything goes uh, all nice and dotted line, which means that's all one big solid uh, shape. And it, it basically, you know, uh, it connected the nodes together. And then if I, as I, as I go through it, um, there you go. So that is awesome. The new trim tool has been very heavily tested. I use it almost every time I boot it uh, into Lightburn now. So um, awesome, 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 awesome. All right, so what else? Um, let's see, as far as user interface goes, there's been changes to the QR code generation, which is now barcodes. So if I go to laser tools and I go to, um, or not laser tools, uh, what is it? It's uh, tools. So if I go to tools and say create barcode, so I'm going to draw out my square just like I would normally do, and it's going to default me to the old style QR code. Now, if I hit this drop down, there are a ton more options here. Um, so you can kind of go through and depending on the format of your, um, of your value, uh, so this wants digits only, so you'll see that it's doing true barcoding to whatever standards uh, that you happen to be using. So it's really, it, it really is cool. Um, this one I think has to start with uh, like A, one, two, three, A. Yeah, so there's different formatting. So it, it validates your formatting that it does work for, you know, the, the particular type of barcode that you're selecting. Um, digits and plus only, three plus, four, five, six. So, you know, that's really cool. So anyway, the QR or the, uh, the, the, the code, barcode, QR code generation has been overhauled pretty well. Um, another one that I noticed is the settings window has been cleaned up significantly. 
So now everything is driven in tabs here and they're grouped together. So you've got your editor settings, uh, units and grids, uh, display settings. Uh, you see so you can, you know, your toolbar sizing and your um, font sizing and stuff like that is all configured through here. Import export settings um, and, uh, and camera calibration. So before all of this was kind of jammed into one screen, now it's broken up into nice neat little tabs. So that's cool. Um, selection tool has been updated a little bit. So if I throw some stuff out here just for the sake of having some stuff on screen. Um, now when I drag right to left, it does the same as it always did and it will only grab shapes that I fully enclose. But if you notice now, there, it's actually a shaded color. So they've, they've shaded and the, the line itself is a little bit uh, more obvious what the coloring is. Um, so left to right, is you know you have to be fully enclosed right to left um, you'll see that it's actually green so it's a green shading um, and you know it allows you to still do the as long as I'm touching it it selects so that's just a little bit of a usability enhancement there um, so that's cool um, let's see material test presets so I was playing with this one a little bit today um, in the material tests so there's some uh, baked in presets here for CO2s and diodes. So if you don't know where to start, a good start would be to come in here and grab a pre-configured test and it's pretty much ready to go. So the only thing you might want to do is if you have to make any small tweaks for your particular machine, but by and large it's grabbing settings that are fairly good for you know a wide variety of machines. Obviously if you're running a hundred watt it's probably going to be different than a 40 watt so you'll want to adjust accordingly, but the base settings are there. Um, same with diodes. So if I switch to a diode engraving test, um, it's you know it slowed down my speeds and or it slowed yeah it slowed down my uh, my feed rate you know two millimeters a second to twenty for a cut engraved twenty to two hundred whereas as my CO two fifty to five hundred and uh, and five to fifty. So these are some good baseline starting points um, for you to create uh, your material test cards with. So, cool stuff there. Um, let's see. Copy along path scaling. So that's one that, if I pull this up here, um, now contains an option to apply a scale factor to copied objects. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, this is a new one to me. So let's take our tool here and do something like that. And I'm going to... Maybe draw a line here. Okay, so now if I take this and I select that and I go to arrange, uh, I think it's a range, yeah, copy along path. Oh, scale copies, okay. Um, so if I increase my copies, allow them to rotate, and if I scale, what's that gonna do? What does that do? Oh, interesting. It's giving me a bit of a gradient. Um, so you see they're smaller here and bigger here. Um, neat. I'm sure there's a particular use case for that that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head, but let's see, does it go negatives? No. So if I scale zero or if I scale one, Okay, if I scale one, it goes the other way. It's small on the right, and then if I go up, it was it was going small on the left. So, um, just something interesting to play around with. I, uh, you know, uh, follow the documentation for it. Um, but cool, it's a neat little uh, a neat little feature there. Uh, let's see what else is new. Um, camera support. Uh, so I'm going to pull this up for so we can go through it together. Um, ongoing process. Uh, they've uh, updated the camera alignment process and I also know that they have added support for the WeCreate camera which is cool and I actually have a WeCreate to play with here and it does seem to work um, but yeah initial WeCreate vision camera support over RNDIS which I think is a network protocol over USB if I'm not mistaken um, I'll have to do some reading up on that but I'm, I think that's how that works um, so that's there and that's new. Uh, the new barcodes, 
Embolaser Pro support, and um, the other big one is BSL support for uh, Galvo lasers that are BSL. Um, so that opens up a, a new line of, of uh, compatibility for them um, with, uh, with some of the Galvo uh, marking lasers that are BSL control boards. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you've got a BSL, check it out. The other thing I know that's, uh, I don't know if it's called out in here, but there's been a whole lot of work around the X-Tool S1. Um, let me see if they called that out in here. No, they didn't. Okay, I'll have to find out if that stuck around or not. They may not have made, that may not have made the release candidate, but I know that they're doing a lot of work to, for compatibility on the S1. Um, all right. Other than that, I mean, there's a lot of other cool stuff in here that you can play with. Um, you know, there's, but really the biggest ones are, are dealing with the, the line tool overhaul, the trim tool, uh, BSL support, um, you know, some of the camera compatibility updates, uh, DSX or DSX, DXF is now exporting properly based on Wazer software, uh, compatibility standards. So that's cool. Um, added support for uh, spacing in the SVG text. So in letter spacing uh, when importing SVG text is, has been added. Um, let's see, what else? I think, I mean, yeah, there's a lot here, but um, new Mac OS camera system. So there's an overhaul to the camera system. That's cool. Uh, I don't have a Mac to do much with that, but uh, it's worth playing around with. Um, allow handling bundles from preferences import. So if you're not familiar with bundles, bundles are slick. Um, if you're working on multiple machines or you do, you, you really just kind of want to save off everything you have, not just your preferences, but your machine configurations and everything along with it, you can come to bundles and do an export bundle and you get your settings, you get your devices, your material libraries and your art libraries. And you can export this all into a single file. And when you go into another instance of Lightburn on another computer, you can import that in. Um, and you can bring in the bundle file and it will essentially make both instances of your Lightburn uh, look the same. Same devices, same settings, same all around. So bundles are definitely something that are cool. Um, and as always, you can import, export just your preferences. Um, so I don't remember if bundles were there in 1.6 or if they're a 1.7 uh, feature, but uh, definitely I've, that's come, you know, been something I've, I've put to use pretty heavily as I'm going through testing on different machines and stuff like that. So anyway, um, just wanted to drop that. This is a relatively short video. We're not going too in-depth on any one thing, but uh, if you haven't already, go check out the public release candidate for 1.7. It's available in the Lightburn software forum. Uh, so if you just go to forum.lightburnsoftware.com and you can come under announcements to release candidates and public release candidate 1.7. And in here, you'll see that there is a couple links um, there's the download link here, as well as instructions for working with release candidates and such there, and then how to contact them for beta. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. Uh, put it to the test. Release candidate means it hasn't dropped fully, so there's time for tweaks if there's anything found wrong still. But uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty exciting. So, again, Lightburn, guys, thank you. There's some really cool stuff in here. And uh, look forward to uh, what else comes out of this. Um, for those that have stuck around this long, keep an eye out. I'm trying to get a couple other videos dropped. Um, I'm working on one that is going to be kind of a, um, uh, a Lightburn 101 kind of entry, you know, series. And it's going to be a bunch of videos over time that are going to focus on smaller, smaller chunks dealing with, um, maybe, you know, Hey, I just got a laser. I have no idea what to do. Where do I start? And, you know, we'll start taking a look at, at some of the more, uh, you know, entry level remedial type of functionality. Um, you know, what is a cut? What is a fill? What are my, what are my options? How do I configure a job to run? You know, what's my, what's my, you know, you'd call it a cam path in the, in the CNC world, but you know, how do I take something I put on screen and make it do something on my laser or how do I just do basic stuff on my screen? So I'm going to come out with a small series of videos that'll address a lot of that stuff. Um, I also have uh, a couple of videos coming out on the WeCreate uh, Vision 40 
I've got one of those in shop, and now that the camera system looks like it's working, uh, I definitely have some cool stuff to play around with there. Um, I do owe Com Marker a video for a fiber laser. Now, it's a fiber laser that I own, I bought with my own money. Um, but they've sent me some test materials and such like that, and I promised them that I would uh, I'd do some just kind of free flow thoughts as I use the machine because it is one of my work workhorses kind of sitting off over on the corner there. Uh, does a lot of the work for my pen business and stuff. So anyway, uh, watch for those videos. Make sure you know you subscribe. Looking at the statistics, there's actually a very small percentage of you that are subscribers to my channel. Please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Click the notifications button so you get notified when I drop new videos. Um, that's a script, that subscription count helps me tremendously, helps uh, these videos get out there and uh, hopefully, you know, get some in the hands of people who they would benefit. So please, you know, take some time, take you two seconds, scroll down just real quick right now, click subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, until next time, this is Carl with the Tinkerverse and we'll talk to you later.